My name is Josie Fraser. Lots of you may know me, some of you may know me from Twitter. Um, I do have an actual job as well. Um, at the moment I'm working for Leicester City Council. I'm the ICT strategy lead for Children's Capital and I'm involved in a quite huge, quite ambitious programme there. We're currently rebuilding or refurbishing um, 24 schools. We've already rebuilt four schools. We're now going across the rest of our secondary estate. Um, and those schools are all of varying sizes. They include um, the SEN schools, they include the hospital schools, and they include the uh, special learning provision schools as well. And my role within that is to support um, the schools in using technology to transform their learning and teaching practice and to take them through that journey. So it's a big, scary, um, ambitious remit, um, which feeds directly into uh, the work that we're all interested in here today and the reason that we're here today. So um, I'm really pleased to be able to come and talk to you, meet some of you and also to cherry pick from the um, 500 word campaign that I was asked to be involved in um, and I've really really enjoyed reading official and unofficial posts um, and especially the comments. So I've just cherry picked a couple of things that really interest me in the context of the work that I'm trying to do at the moment. So they will be more or less interesting to you. So this is Martin Weller talking about space. Um, and Martin's talking about the role of education in safeguarding and providing space. It's something that I'm very, very interested in. Not just the physical space, also the digital space, and also the kind of psychological or even intellectual space that we need to learn and to thrive and function in and the impact that has on us as learners and the opportunity that those spaces um, provide. Martin also highlights and points at the role of identity as a learner um, and he's talking about it in terms of the experience of, of, of university students becoming themselves whilst they're at, at, at university which I'm interested in but I'm very very much interested in the role identity plays in terms of young people being able to adopt and adapt an identity for themselves as learners and the journey that that takes them on. This identity, whether it's, online, whether it's expressed online or whether it's a developmental thing, isn't a static thing. It isn't a reflection of an essential self. It's actually a thing in process, a thing that changes and develops. So tapping into um, how our identity is shaped and formed and what we think about that. I was delighted to kick the uh, day off with an, uh, an example of a young lady who obviously was thrilled by her educational experience and is having a brilliant time at school um, and perceives her, ident her, her relationship to the spaces and identities and engagements um, with education as a fun thing, which is great. Um, Another post I've picked out today is Dave White's post and I've reason, the reason I've picked this one is because it's very relevant to the day. Um, Dave's talking about how we navig navigate the tensions um, that understandably come out of our proposals for what education is, for what the purpose of education is. Um, and he's very positive here. It's not a problem to solve, but a tension that can be successfully negotiated, given a shared understanding of purpose. That's one of the reasons that we're here today. And um, obviously, I'd pull Dave back on that a little bit. Uh, it's not just about a shared purpose. It's actually about shared definitions, some of which will conflict with each other, some of which won't. But to have that discussion and that debate and to begin to develop and articulate that language and that conversation is a really critical thing for taking it forward. I've pulled out Graham and Atwells. Um, the city that I work in is uh, one of the most cosmopolitan cities in Europe and it's also one of the most ethnically diverse regions in Europe. But we also have huge amounts of children living in comparative poverty. Um, so. I'm very much faced on a day-to-day -day basis with the reality of access, the reality of education, and what it means to actually provide education for all um, and to um, work within a, very, uh, within a con context that re really responds to the individuals that we're trying to look after as well as the communities we're trying to look after. So um, Graham here really uh, reiterates the um, the role that education, the difficult role that education plays and the ways in which that it 
works within contexts that reinscribe and reiterate existing power structures, and that we have to work within um, to try and move, uh, to try and make sure that we're not um, we're not leaving learners out. And this recalls calls back, I think, to that thing about identity as well. Identity as a learner. It's really important for us to remember that it isn't just about us being lovely to the learners. It's actually a very complex social and political situation where we have learners who are developing their identities in direct opposition to the agents and to the, um, and to the realities of what our education system is. And that's partly to do with their social and political circumstances. It's partly to do with a lot of other issues. But what those learners are doing by inscribing their identities in that way is not being able to benefit from the opportunities that they may get because they're reinscribing themselves in direct opposite and in direct opposition to the only channels they may have to pursue education. Okay, and that's just to wrap up with a quote from uh, the post that I made earlier. Um, and thank you to everybody who made a poster from one of my quotes as well. Really appreciate it. So just to wrap up, I'm going to hand over to Fred, and Fred's going to talk about the C word. It's a great word. And um, just to really reiterate two points. One, this is an important conversation, but it's not, as Doug rightly mentioned at the beginning, it's not one that we need to just be having amongst ourselves. It's actually an important one that we have in our communities, <coughs> in our whole school communities, in our whole educational communities. And by engaging young people in those communities, I firmly believe that is the way that we're going to support and allow those young people to take ownership of education because that's what we need to ensure is going on and for me it's not just about individual students benefiting it's not just about amazing individual teachers it's about how can we ensure that every single learner wherever they're from whatever the background whatever their attitude towards education has a really good experience and standard of education how do we do that at local level at city-wide level at county-wide level and at national level Okay, so thanks very much, and I'll hand over to Fred.